Alright guys, so today I'm going to more a little more in-depth demonstrate a good way to automate the inscribers with GSA E2. Now mind you, in automating the inscribers with GSA E2 is a lot more expensive resource-wise because you know interfaces, importers, exporters, storage buses, they cost a bit more than things like, you know, Xnet and ducts and stuff like that would cost so and I mean a hybrid approach would be a bit cheaper as well so anyway so here I've got our four inscribers set up so logic engineering calculation and silicon set up in a row here all turned on their sides now one thing you might have noticed is the silicon one is full so to save on crafting processors and to keep the system from ever getting hung because it can't craft it, originally I was going to just have it use a crafting card and craft printed silicon on demand, but that could cause issues. So now I'm just exporting silicon in and then importing it into a closed network with a storage bus on the side that needs the silicon. And then here I'm exporting redstone in the side that needs redstone. So what we've got going on here, there are interfaces on each of these three that we need to craft our processors with. So the logic one says one ingot to a printed logic circuit, the engineering one diamond, the calculation one pure. So that will auto craft the printed components and then they get imported back into the system. Once again, a hybrid approach, replacing these importers with like item ducts into an interface would be much, much cheaper. But I just wanted to show a pure AE2 way. So we're providing power to the inscribers with just some Fluix cable isolated from the network so it just carries power. And this way also uses a few channels as well. 10 channels. So we've got a stretch going across the top and a stretch going across the bottom there. Then this one, this interface right here, this has one printed calculation equals one calculation, one printed engineering, and so on. And, I mean, it works pretty well. Let's just empty these out. I mean, it's just as fast as other things. It's just a bit more expensive. I don't know why one probe says this doesn't have any power. But it's going at it and then it's replenishing its uh, printed silicon supplies as it needs to so once this gets done let's tear it down and rebuild it all right so now we've torn it down so now let's uh, let's rebuild it shall we Actually, let's try putting the finished product one closer this time. I don't think I've done that before. Let's see, I need to rotate these. All right, so this is gonna need logic, engineering, calculation, one more silicon so first let's get our they not have any interfaces in here so here's our interface which we'll get Nope, not that. Uh, that one. So there will be our finished product. Then we're going to need an export. Giving it redstone. And actually, let's switch this one to silicon since it's right next to it. That way our little micro network won't have to go very far. So this one's engineering. Engineering. 
So engineering, calculation, and logic. Now let's grab an import bus to pull these back in. This one's gonna be a little bit different because it's gonna be that micro network. And we're gonna throw a storage bus so it just uh, all transfers in there. And I'm gonna throw a quartz fiber here to keep the data from connecting. But to give it power. Now, let's throw an export bus on here. Silicon. Let's go ahead and run this across. So that should go ahead and start printing silicon, except that it doesn't have any power. So let's go ahead and run the power for all these. And then I don't want it to do any shenanigans there. Nor there. And we need an import bus for the finished product of that inscriber. I don't want that connecting either. And then we need, we are, however, going to need data coming around the bottom here that doesn't connect to there. I don't know why it keeps bringing up the UI there sometimes. Now, how many channels is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that's too many. So let's run... Redstone. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Still too many. Yeah, perhaps putting this on this side wasn't such a hot idea. But, I mean, nothing says this has to be pretty because it's just showing how it works. The arrangement doesn't matter. There we go. So now, in theory, we should go ahead, I mean, we should be able to go ahead and ask for some engineering processors. Oh yeah, we need speed. So it's crafting engineering processors. That import bus isn't working. Why is that import bus? Oh no, it is. It's just crafting it faster than this is, because it had the upgrades first. All right, so that works. So there's pure AE2. I'm gonna tear it down again, and we're gonna do a hybrid approach, which should be a lot more efficient channel and expense-wise, so BRB again. So once again, we've got our inscribers set up here with logic, engineering, calculation, and silicon presses. So some of this is gonna be the same. So like, let's get our export there. Let's get our export there for the silicon. Let's get our interfaces across the tops there. Except this interface, I want to be a full block interface instead of a, a multi-block interface. 
let's grab the crescent hammer again and rotate it so it knows which way to go. And let's go ahead and throw the recipes in there and the recipes in these. That one. That one. Let's go ahead and throw out some of the... Oh, I needed that redstone. That. That. Go ahead and throw the speed upgrades in these. Get out of there. Okay. So this time I'm going to use some thermal dynamics item ducts to make things a bit cheaper. Now I'm just going to go ahead and use fast ones just so that uh, everything is faster. So I'm going to run an item duct across the bottom here for the silicon. Let's go ahead and run that down to one. And then I'm going to run... So, I'm also going to make this one a full block interface. And I lied, I need the crescent hammer again. And then I'm going to run these here. So I'm going to disconnect them from there. And I'm going to run that back up into the interface there. I'm going to go ahead and put these servos on. Which you could also just use a retriever and filter it, but this is just easier. And you could use much cheaper servos. And then I'm just going to use some item or some uh, flux duct for the power. So that's much cheaper than uh, making cables. All right, so now we just need our cabling. Oh yeah. Then one more bit here. This will pull the finished product out and run it back into the interface there. So anytime items get pushed into an interface, they just get sent back into the ME system. So in theory, this should work now. Apparently it is resuming the craft from before. Good old AE2. Or is it? I mean, it tried. Let's go ahead and try making eight more. There we go, this hybrid approach is much cheaper because you have far fewer import buses, export buses, no storage bus, so on and so forth. So this whole thing is what? Four, in, four interfaces, two and two export buses, pretty much. So I mean, it's not bad. I mean, in the long run, I prefer a pure build that doesn't use AE2 for it because then it's much cheaper, because then you only have one interface, but, you know, it's nice to do these things from time to time. So anyway, guys, I'll see you later.